When I posted my video, the one that kind of got everyone to subscribe or know about this channel in the first place, the one where I talked about Rachel Hollis's divorce, when I posted that video months ago, a lot of people came into the comments of that video asking if they could come on my Friday date night with me, to which I told everyone yes, but we're in a pandemic, so I can't invite you all to Chicago right now. However, the reason that people wanted to come to my Friday date night is that in that video, I explained that what I do every Friday is that Tyler and I put on a movie, right? We find like a shitty movie, like a, a terrible B movie, a terrible like sci-fi or horror or action movie from the 80s that's just like very low quality. We get some margaritas or we get like a bunch of alcohol, we get some bourbon, or we just drink all night and watch shitty movies. And that is date night every Friday. In the month of November, we've started a tradition of making that date night where we watch shitty Christmas romance movies. So we'll find like the cheesiest movies and some Sometimes a movie, like, so our plan is that, like, every November we watch bad Christmas movies, and then every December we watch the good ones, you know, like the classics or, like, the modern classics, like, elf and movies like that. So one of our new favorites this year is called Holiday. I bet you guys have seen Holiday. So that's one of our favorites. And one of my favorite movies was Happiest Season with Kristen Stewart. Now, of course, the movies that I love my all-time internet rivals, Classically Abby and Ben Shapiro, they have to hate those movies. Yeah, you effin' with some wet-ass P-word. P-word is female genitalia. Bring a <laughs> bucket and a mop for this wet-ass P-word. Give me everything you got for this wet-ass P-word. Yeah, you effin' with some wet-ass P-word. They hated them. They both went on rants about, Ben went on a rant about how he hates Happiest Season and Abby went on a rant about how she hates Holiday. So obviously I had to respond to it because their criticisms are pointless and don't make any sense whatsoever. Now, I think it would have made a lot of sense because, okay, Ben Shapiro and Abby, they're both um, conservative and they're both Jewish. So I can understand from their perspective how it might be like, okay, we, movies uh, about holidays could have, you know, more of a traditional, like, old-fashioned, like, what's the root of this holiday, what's the religious significance, that kind of thing. But since they're also Jewish, they would probably be like, okay, where are the Hanukkah movies? Where are those movies? Like, we should have more Hanukkah movies instead of, like, just so many Christmas movies every year. I could get, like, that would be a totally valid criticism, and I would agree with them on that. However, their criticisms have stemmed from like Ben Shapiro being like I don't like Happiest Season because there's too many lesbians in Christmas movies now which it's like where could you please direct me like genuinely please we are gonna go into their videos that they have made to trash some of my favorite Christmas movies and make me super upset I hope you guys enjoy hit you some nuts there was lots of memes makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? It's Savvy, your gay aunt from the 80s, and today we are going to be talking about cheesy Christmas romances. Now, as I have mentioned, I have not watched any of these videos yet. I am like, I've, I've kind of read what they're going to talk about a little bit, but I wanted to react to this and give my opinions on what's happening live, so this is going to be like my real reaction. <laughs> uh, the first video we're going to take a look at is Ben Shapiro talking about the movie Happiest Season. Now, Happiest Season is the new Christmas movie that just came out on Hulu. It stars Kristen Stewart. She is incredibly hot the entire movie, and that is the main reason I wanted to see it. But the movie is about, uh, it's, it's basically like your standard cheesy Hallmark style Christmas movie, but with the main character or the main relationship being between two women and also centering on the idea of like uh, there's some like um addressing of homophobia and what that does and there's the conflict of like being ready to come out to your family and what that means so there's a little bit of that in there but at its core it really is kind of a cheesy hallmark style romance it doesn't go that deep but i don't need it to i just like my cheesy christmas movies to be cheesy just feed me the cheese daddy that's all i need so i loved this movie i thought it was great uh, I, and I know that it had some flaws and there are some flaws that I think would be fair to address in this but for some reason I get the feeling that Ben Shapiro is not gonna have the same criticisms for it that I've seen a lot of other people having. Some valid criticisms for this movie I would say Kristen Stewart's character ended up with the wrong person in the end that the person she ended up with was maybe not the healthiest relationship I would say that that's a valid criticism although 
if you want your cheesy Christmas movies to portray healthy relationships, you've come to the wrong place. At least that's how I see it. So, but that's a valid criticism. Another valid criticism might be that some of the character arcs seem to happen too quickly. Like the the parents uh, in the movie, that their character arc seem to, they seem to abruptly change too fast towards the end. That might be, and I'm not trying to give away any spoilers, so I'm not going to go too deep into all of this, but that could be another valid criticism for this movie. Things about about the actual plot and the actual characters or things about the relationships between the characters, things like that. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions, obviously, but those would be some criticisms that I would think at least make sense, even if I do personally like this movie a lot. Now, from what I've seen in the description of what we're about to watch, Ben Shapiro's main criticism of this movie is that there are too many lesbian Christmas movies and there are not enough options for people who don't want to watch lesbian Christmas movies, which blows my mind a little bit. But let's just let's hear it straight from him. Let's see what Ben has to say. In the end, conservatives are going to have to get into the business of actually making entertainment because the left has decided that all entertainment is now to be woke. All OK. I need to understand what he means by this. So first of all, there are conservatives in entertainment. The first, if we're going to talk about Christmas movies specifically, uh, the first one that comes to mind is Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. Uh, it's not a very good movie, just in terms of like not having a very interesting storyline. I watch like I watch it because I love watching Christmas movies that are objectively bad, especially in November and like playing drinking games to them. So that's an example. But you know that movie was very like in terms of being conservative, it was very conservative from like a Christian perspective. And I know that Ben Shapiro is Jewish, so I'm not sure if he would like that movie but my my point is there are conservative christmas movies out there um and also since ben shapiro is jewish i don't really get why he cares about christmas movies so much like it would make so much more sense if his criticism were there aren't enough hanukkah movies like let's make more movies about different religious holidays other than christmas right but if he's going to complain about christmas movies i feel like if you're encouraging more conservatives to make christmas movies just because of the way the demographics cross over a lot of conservatives who would want Christmas movies are going to be Christian. I feel like that's just more likely to happen. So I, would that, would he like that more? Would he like more Christian movies considering he's not Christian? Like, I don't really get what he wants, but he's going to explain it. Let's listen to what he has to say. Right, for, for example, normal holiday fare tends to be pablum, right? It tends to be the kind of stuff that is really not socially justice oriented. It's sort of warm, warms the cockles of your heart. kind of stuff. So Hulu decided this year that they were going to make their holiday pitch uh, a lesbian rom-com. Now, listen, they can do whatever. Okay, yeah, so Hulu made a lesbian rom-com. But, like, there's been so many Christmas movies that have come out this year. Like, on the streaming platforms, Netflix, Hulu, all of them. Like, I've been watching all the Christmas movies. The vast majority of them are about straight people. This one... And I think it's a New York Christmas wedding, which I haven't watched yet, but I'm going to, are the only ones that I've seen that are about lesbians. All the rest of them are about straight people that I've seen. So, I mean, yes, they Hulu made a lesbian Christmas movie. I don't see the problem, but please continue. Whatever they want. Free country. Company yep. can do what it wants. Agreed. Typically, when you're talking about a religious holiday, which is what Christmas is, I mean, it is a secular holiday for many Americans, but it also happens to be a religious holiday. Typically, mm -hmm. you celebrate that by, you know, celebrating things that don't, directly cut against a lot of religious sensibilities but that's okay i i know but okay i don't get this because i know a lot of people who are christian and lgbt i know a lot of people i mean my best friend is a lesbian and is jewish like so i don't i don't understand what he's talking about here like i get i i mean i'm not like ignorant of the world around me i know that there are people out there who try to use religious arguments as a way to claim that the lgbt community is not valid or that same-sex relationships are not acceptable by the bible or whatever but i feel like a lot of people have progressed beyond that in this day and age at least a lot of people that i know even religious people christmas is a religious holiday for some people but he even admitted that it's also a secular holiday and also he's not christian <laughs> I'm just so lost with what he what he's talking about here. Go on, Ben. That's the, that's the direction Hulu has gone. And they've gone that direction so far that they have decided, uh, the, the entertainment industry, that they have to go to places like Hallmark and then browbeat them into making pieces uh, on lesbian and gay couples, even though the main constituency for Hallmark is largely religious families with small children. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? I'm just so confused. Religious families with small children... How, like, I don't, there's no, there's nothing that's mutually exclusive here. Like, a religious family with small children can watch a movie with a lesbian couple in it 
just as much as anyone else can. Like, I don't, there, th this, this, I feel like Ben is trying to make a point, but he's not connecting the pieces and he's trying to leave my brain to connect the pieces of his argument for him, which is difficult because I've explained this before and I think it's because of my OCD, but the way I interpret things tends to be very literal. I interpret things in terms of the words that people actually say to me. And I think that makes for a fun time arguing, but it's also makes it really difficult for me to understand when people don't say exactly what they mean. So what he's saying here is, well, the primary audience of Hallmark is religious families with small children. I'll take his word for it. I've never looked at the demographic makeup of Hallmark viewers. He's saying that, I'll take his word for it. And then he's saying Hallmark has been putting out lesbian movies. Okay. But those two, that's just two separate statements. Like, I don't get how they connect. And I think he's, he's like, he's not making the full argument. I don't know, like, I'm going, to, I'm not good at assuming things. This is what I'm saying. So I'm going to have to try to assume that what he's saying here is that religious families with small children wouldn't like lesbian movies. But that's, that he didn't say that. But I think that's what he's implying. And if that's what he's implying, then it's like, how do you know that? And also, what what is the connection, though? What does being religious or having a small child have to do with not liking movies with lesbians in them? Because as I've said, I know a lot of people who are religious or who do have small children. Most people I know in this day and age who have small children are either part of the LGBT community or are strong allies for it. So having small children has nothing to do with not liking gay or lesbian movies or I, I just don't get what point he's making here but i hope he continues you know that that's their prerogative all these are free companies they can do what they want but uh -huh. it means that conservatives Agreed. can and should build alternatives again i'm not even saying that it's terrible to make a movie about you know, that's a lesbian rom-com make whatever you want all i'm saying is that if you are a conservative with conservative sensibilities at a certain point you might get sick of the fact that hollywood only wants to make the kinds of movies that you despise okay Okay, this is what I had seen earlier. So he's like, you need alternatives. Hollywood only wants to. So is he saying that there are too many lesbian Christmas movies now to the point where he has no other options, where people who don't want to watch lesbian movies have no, because I just want to go and live in whatever alternate universe Ben Shapiro is living in where we are just drowning in lesbian movies. Where? Where are all these lesbian movies, Ben? Where are all these lesbian movies to the point where we don't have any other options? Because I'll switch lives with you so that I can live in that universe and you can live in the universe where it's just like straight people in your face all day. And then we can, we can live our separate lives, but I'm sure Ben still wouldn't be happy because I think deep down this video is just made, or this this rant was just made for clickbait purposes because um, Happiest Season is a hot new movie right now and Ben Shapiro um, probably wants to stay relevant and get ad revenue from clicks. That's my assumption of his motivation, but as I explained earlier, I'm not very good at assuming things, so I could be totally wrong. Also, why does Ben despise movies about lesbians? Like. He's never really explained that. Only wants to make the kind of movies that slap your sensibilities in the face and treat you like you're a fool. What? And that, that movie from uh, from Hulu, apparently, is, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going by the review. You didn't see it! <laughs> how, how do you know this movie slapped your sensibility if you didn't even watch it, Ben? Oh my god. Ben, I'm gonna need you to watch this lesbian movie and get back to me because I loved it, and I thought it actually... It was, it was pretty tame. Like, there was literally zero leftist messaging in this movie. Like, there was the message of, like, lesbians are valid, but that was about it. Even, like, the girl, um, Kristen Stewart's girlfriend in the movie, her dad was a politician, but it's never even stated, like, what party he's registered with or what he runs for. So, like, even the political stuff is, does not take a side. So, like, I, I... I, if you found something to get offended in in that movie after you watch it, I would be shocked and I think you would be reaching, but I wouldn't be surprised if you would be reaching for something to get offended by. Views, which are, of course, 100% positive. 
Uh, the, the movie is all about how... Okay, also the reviews are not 100% positive. I have seen a ton of negative reviews on this movie from people of all demographics. I've even seen negative reviews from other lesbians saying that this movie, you know, promoted an unhealthy relationship. And I think that's valid. Like I said, there are tons of valid criticisms about this movie or people saying that the character arcs were too abrupt, that the characters didn't really go through enough of a process to change. Like, I've seen tons of criticisms of this movie. So, um, no, dude, you're just, you're making shit up. A conservative family learns that all of their religious values have been a bunch of crap for years, which is always exciting news. Okay, when did that happen, Ben? When did that happen? Oh my god. Also, like, the movie is not even necessarily about a conservative family. It's about a family that seems a little more old-fashioned, but again, like I said, the girl's dad is a politician and it's never even stated what party he's running for. It's never, that's never even brought up. We never even learn about what his political platform is that he's running on because that's not the point of the movie. It's just the point of the movie of him being a politician is not even that he's like a right wing guy who gets told that he's wrong. That's, that doesn't even happen. It's just like a politician and that's only relevant because he's trying to portray like a perfect family image for the press. And his one daughter being a lesbian was only one of the things that was being hidden from him. There were other conflicts in his family going on that he didn't know about either that were being hidden from him because everyone was like, oh, we need to make sure that we protect his image and his career and that kind of thing. So it was really more about the idea of like having to project a, a, a false image of yourself onto society. Again, it never stated even what side he was running for. And I'll be clear, like even in the Democratic Party, like, you don't see a lot of people in the LGBT community openly getting elected to higher positions. So, like, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. People still seem to value in terms of, like, a politician, like, seeing, oh, this person is representative of the man and woman married and have children type of family. So, anyway, that's, that, I, I don't believe that there was any kind of, uh, conservative sensibilities being told they're wrong like that just didn't happen in the movie but of course he didn't watch it as he admitted so you wouldn't know that he just heard that there were some lesbians and then assumed that that's what was gonna happen okay so i had to go on a little rant about that because happiest season was a movie that made me happy and if you didn't like it there are so many valid criticisms to have about this movie which are totally fine but this just doesn't make sense and this just ben looks like he's just grasping at straws here for something to be mad about because he knows that his fans will click on videos when he gets mad and also that people like me who don't like him will click on his videos when he gets mad to react to them. So I'm sure he made a ton of ad revenue off of this rant that he went on. Now we're gonna head over to Ben's sister, Abby, who, if you guys remember, I have reacted to a bunch of her videos in the past. I have done so as classically savvy, your straight aunt from the 50s, but today, y'all, I have too much work going on to put on the straight aunt from the 50s outfit, so I am just looking like I normally look today to react to Abby, so you guys will just have to accept the fact that Abby is much more beautiful than I am in these videos. Um, I hope that's okay. Uh, this classically Abby video that we're gonna watch is called PSA men wearing dresses is trash just like dirty holiday movies now I think I wanted to react to this video in the same video that I talked about Ben's rant on um, happiest season because again like I said I'm very into watching holiday movies right now and in this one she's gonna go on a rant about some dirty holiday movies I have not watched this video at all yet so I don't even know what she's gonna say and I'm gonna try to respond to it as she goes and pause periodically. If you are new to my channel, the scoop oh, is our opportunity shit. to- Oh my God. Abby got ratioed to shit on this, dude. Look at that. Oh my God. This video has like over 90% dislikes. That is, oh, that is not good. I love hearing what you guys have been up to. So please leave that in the comments. I always read them. Grab your- Wait. You read all the comments, Abby, because I left you a comment a couple weeks ago. Abby was talking about how she loves to, to speak to audiences and do speeches about her conservative beliefs. And I said, does your, do your speaking services extend to other people's YouTube channels? Because I'd like to have a debate with you. And then a lot of people were responding to this comment being like, I would love to see this. And Abby never responded, but she just said that she reads all the comments. So I, I know you saw me. You know who I am, Abby. Don't ignore me. 
yourself a cup of coffee. I've got mine right here today. I've got my coffee. Have some coffee tea here. or just some water, whatever you are drinking, and let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about today is something that kind of went viral on Twitter, and that was Harry Styles in a dress on the cover of Vogue. Really what happened is that Candace Owens commented on the fact that Harry Styles was in a dress, and so did a few other commentators on Twitter, and it kind of blew up. I saw, I, I briefly saw what Candace Owens tweeted about it, and her tweet I didn't think made a lot of sense. It was something along the lines of like, no society can survive without strong and masculine men. And I, like, she didn't really back that up with anything, nor did she explain how wearing a dress makes a man less masculine. She didn't, like, connect it to it. Again, it was a thing where it was, like, she's forcing other people to assume what the argument is rather than drawing the connection for you. As a good, I feel like a good argument needs to draw the connection. So it's, like, if you're gonna tell me that a man in a dress is less masculine, you need to tell me how and why. And if you think less masculinity is going to hurt society, you also need to tell me why. As somebody who really values masculinity and finds masculinity very attractive, I do I find masculinity attractive too. I guess that depends what you mean by masculinity. Again, this hasn't been defined, but if we're gonna talk about, I guess, traditional masculinity of the past, I don't know, two centuries or so, um, I married a guy with a thick beard. So I would say that that means that uh, I value masculinity. I don't know, I value femininity too though, because I also like girls with a thick ass. Thick beard and thick ass. <laughs> That's what I, all I want for Christmas. Don't find Harry Styles in a dress attractive. Okay, you don't have to find him attractive, though. No one ever said you had to be attracted to him. I don't, this might blow Abby's mind, but, like, anyone can be attracted to whoever they want, and that's totally fine. Like, you don't have to find him attractive, and, like, you are, like, you're the one who's always going off about why it's so important to have a relationship with only the one person that you're married to. So since you're already married, like, by your own logic, wouldn't you not want to find anyone else attractive? So, like, what's the issue? <laughs> Maybe she's going to tell me the issue. And this is something that kind of became part of the joke, is that people were saying, oh my gosh, Harry Styles in a dress is just my type. He looks so handsome. He looks so great. Some people thought that, dude. Like, here's the thing. Like, why does what other people find attractive? If you don't find it attractive, no one's telling you you have to. You don't have to be into Harry Styles, dude. It's not a big deal. Just go have sex with your husband and just leave Harry Styles alone. I don't get why there has to be a problem. No. Wait, what do you mean, no? Why Why are you the authority on what other people find attractive? So if someone else is into, like, so am I into Harry Styles in a dress? Um, I think I would have been into it if the dress had been a little better fitting. I thought the dress itself was kind of ugly, like, from a fashion perspective. But I'm not the authority. Again, if someone else liked it, that's, that's up to them. Like, I am personally attracted to people wearing clothes that traditionally wouldn't have gone with their gender. I do think that's attractive, just because, like... I, I think that people like trying out new things and standing out in the crowd. I think that's attractive. That's my thing though. That doesn't have to be your thing, Abby. Why can't we just live and let live? You can't tell me no. Uh, anyway, continue. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect? What? what? She's like, so people are like, Harry Styles in a dress is my type. And Abby's like, no, incorrect. I don't get it. Like, why, why are you the authority on what someone else likes? I don't get it. <laughs> As somebody who loves the fact that my husband is a man and is masculine, seeing a man in a dress doesn't really do it for me. Um and that's fine. It doesn't have to do it for you. But why are you mad that it does it for other people? Have fun with your husband. Like, just why does it? I don't get why she cares. Other than um, she's probably making ad revenue from this. Um, and getting, dude, getting ratioed that hard is good for the algorithm because, he, like, the, the dislikes count as engagement just as much as the likes do. So, I, I feel like that's probably the reason. That's the only reason I can guess because I, I don't get why she cares. I'm gonna be honest. The thing about it is that I think that masculinity is actually really important. I think that men need to embrace the best parts of masculinity, right? Masculinity, just like femininity, can be directed in the worst possible directions, but it can also be directed in the best possible directions. And it 
Okay, so, she, okay. I'm interested to hear what she's going to have to say next because she's talking about embracing the best parts of masculinity and I don't know what that means. I did respond to her on Twitter because she... So people have been tweeting at her like, men throughout history have worn dresses. Like, a man wearing a dress is not inherently feminine because men throughout history have worn dresses. And she responded by being like, okay, but I don't care about what happened in history. I'm talking about right now it's not considered masculine to wear a dress. And so I replied to her and was like, so you're admitting then that masculinity is not just like an inherent thing that exists. It's not like a scientific property. Like, it's a thing that can change over time depending on what people decide to do. And of course she didn't respond to me. And it's so important to embrace the best parts of masculinity and of femininity, right? Women want those? men who are going to protect them. And that protective instinct is a masculine thing. I don't want men who are going to protect me. Like, I don't know, I don't know why she, like, she says women want men who are going to protect them. Do you have a source for that? Like, it's fine if you want a man who's going to protect you. And if all the women you know want men who are going to protect them, they have that choice too. But like, how do you know that every woman wants a man who's going to protect her? And also, how does wearing a dress mean you're not going to protect someone? You got, you haven't drawn, didn't draw the connection! Gotta draw the connections between your arguments, otherwise people aren't going to understand what you're talking about. Women want men who want to support them. That's a wonderful masculine trait. Men... How does wearing a dress mean that no, that they're not going to support you? You still haven't explained that. In dresses? Not so much. So you're saying women want men who will protect them. Women want men who will support them. Women don't want men in dresses. Okay, but from the response of largely women on Twitter saying they found Harry Styles in a dress to be hot, they clearly do want men in dresses. So you're just wrong. Like, it's fine if some women don't, but it's also fine if some women do. So, like, again, I thought that, like... I don't know, I might just be projecting what Ben Shapiro has said onto her, but he has said a lot of things that, like, his conservative perspective, right, is that everything is an individualist, independent, like, it's kind of like the Ayn Rand t style of conservatism, where it's so individualist, everyone does their own thing and ignores other people, and I guess that comes down to, like, the, I don't know, libertarian economic style of it, where it's like the government doesn't interfere with your business, and you also don't pay taxes, and, but I think the belief comes down to, like, complete individualism, where everyone can make the own, their own choice for themselves. So I don't get it. I, I'm again, I'm not saying that Abby necessarily believes this. this is just what I have heard Ben saying. So I won't project all of her brother's opinions onto her, even though they do seem very similar. But if you're a person who believes in individualism, I don't get why you wouldn't extend that then to people being attracted to whatever they want and also wearing whatever they want. Because again, it's not your problem. Men don't belong in dresses. In Western Why? culture, it's not a thing. Men Why? don't belong in dresses. Because Why? men should be men. It's a good thing for men to be men. Okay, but... <laughs> oh my god! She doesn't explain why! It's a good thing for men to be men. Great. Great argument, Abby. How, like, where does wearing a dress factor in? Like, you haven't explained yet how putting on a dress makes you less protective or less supportive or like you haven't explained it not to be the worst version of men but to be good strong capable men the best version okay, but, of masculinity yeah. is refining it and elevating it but masculinity How? should still be there not having masculinity at all would be a real loss to okay so she has defined masculinity as being strong being protective and being supportive she has not once explained how wearing a dress cancels any of that out like she she just hasn't explained it and it's driving me nuts because like abby i i want to give your arguments the benefit of the doubt but you're not explaining it and this is why i need you to come on my channel i, I just want to talk to us as women, the whole idea of toxic masculinity really bothers me because the okay. word toxic implies that masculinity in and of itself is poisonous. And it's not. Mas okay, I'll give Abby the benefit of the doubt on this point. So I'll explain my thoughts on the phrase toxic masculinity. I think that it's a concept that it, that is something that needs to be discussed. But I think it as a, as a phrase, it can often give the wrong idea to people who don't already understand the concept, if that makes sense. So I think if like toxic masculinity is one of those things where if you want to address like the root of the problem, and you explain this to someone else, and that person didn't already understand what that was, it could potentially turn them off. Because you 
they might be like, thinking that it's like an attack on men. So like as someone who does identify as a feminist, I don't hate men, right? I married a man. I, I think men can be great, just like Abby does. I think men can be great. I think that they can be incredibly wonderful people. I, I think that when a lot of us talk about toxic masculinity, what that means, just because, you know, I like to define my terms unlike Abby, what a lot, what that means is kind of this cultural expectation, right, that men are supposed, not just that they should be strong, but that they should be strong in all situations, uh, and that men um, should not be able to show their emotions, or that men showing their emotions is less manly. It's basically this cultural expectation that emotions are feminine and physical strength is masculine. And what has been found is that that idea, you know, our culture and our experiences shape all of us. And a lot of times you see that men are the ones causing the majority of physically violent crimes. Men are often the ones who are, you know, doing mass shootings. They're the ones who are going on murdering sprees the majority of the time. And the idea is that culturally people have imposed this idea on men that the most masculine thing you can be is physically violent and emotionally closed off. And that is a thing that hurts men. Now, I think that, I, I understand what she's saying, that I think that calling it toxic masculinity can be a little bit of a problem because a lot of men don't realize, when you, when you phrase it that way, a lot of them might be like, okay, well, as a man, like, it, it might sound to them like you're attacking men and saying that men themselves are the problem rather than like a cultural expectation of forced gender roles being the problem. So I would be all in favor of rephrasing the term toxic masculinity uh, to something else. I don't know what else I would call it, but I'm in favor of that. But the concept itself is something that's important, which is basically it's the same thing. Like if you want to talk about like toxic femininity, it would be like the same thing. It's basically just the idea that forcing gender roles on people harms everyone in the end because it, it puts these expectations on people that lead to, you know, greater violence, lead to greater discrimination, lead to all kinds of problems. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I don't know what Abby's gonna say. Masculinity is a great thing when it's directed properly, but just okay. like anything, masculinity can be an idol. So saying that masculinity has a really important role in men's lives is something that we should all believe and understand. And I know okay. that strictly from the perspective of am I attracted to a man who would put on a dress? The answer is... The answer is book of the month. Oh my god, I can't believe an ad popped up here. Next up, I want to talk about the Netflix movie Holidate. So this came out, it kind of- Oh, Abby, you better not be about to diss Holidate. Holidate is one of my favorite Christmas movies that came out this year. Bitch, I love Holidate. I was going off on this on my live stream the other night on Wednesday night. I was shouting about how much I love Holidate because this movie was just- so funny, mainly because, like, I watched this with Tyler, and we did one of our, we would do one of our, like, cheesy movie nights on a Friday night. We got all these margaritas, and we got drunk as shit, and what I loved about this movie was the drunker I got, the weirder the movie got, and I wasn't sure if it was because I was getting drunker the whole time, but then Tyler, who was, like, less drunk than me, because he, margaritas affect him a little less, I guess, because he's bigger and more masculine. <laughs> so, we're watching the movie, and he's like, He's like, no, the movie actually is just getting weirder. I'm like, wait, did this just go from like standard rom-com to like that guy's finger just got blown off? Is that what happened? It takes place near me in Chicago. The opening scene in it, right? If you've seen Holiday, in the opening scene where, uh, or the opening for the male lead where he is um, meeting his girlfriend's family. They're in Evanston where I lived for four years. And then the opening scene for the female lead, uh, Emma Roberts, where her family is, is in Lincoln Square, which is like a couple blocks west of me right now so it's like i love when movies take place in chicago and near me and so that's fun and also i just loved how the leads were both so cynical and snarky the whole time like they just the chemistry was on point tyler even hates like holiday romances but the whole time he was like wait i like legitimately kind of like this movie we were just kind of like shipping them so hard the whole time they reminded me of us in so many ways just like Oh, I loved it. I loved Holiday. Okay, Abby, break my heart. Break my heart, mommy. I made the rounds. People were talking about it. It has Emma Roberts in one of the starring roles. This movie is not good. It's just not. I do not recommend- Shut your dirty mouth, Abby! This movie's fantastic! Why do you hate Holiday?
recommend it. So basically the premise is that there are these two main characters, of course it's a rom-com, and neither yes. one wants to really date. So instead yes. they decide that they're going to use each other as actual dates to attend events, attend yeah. holidays, uh -huh. and then they don't have to bring somebody home or worry about kind of the dating aspect of dating. So they just yep. have somebody to bring to the big events in exactly. their lives with their families, etc., etc. Accurate summary. This movie is trash. It is why? not good. <laughs> why? And I'm going to give you a few reasons why. So number one is that if you are trying to figure out the perfect things not to do to be classic, this is the movie for you. Emma Roberts' character is just, honestly, it's sad. It's sad for her because she seems like somebody who may have bought into the kind of narrative that I talked about in my last video of happiness comes from accepting kind of your worst qualities, being that BuzzFeed style slob. Does Abby not understand character arcs? That like a character is supposed to have problems in the beginning that they eventually solve toward the end? Like, is she just ignore like, so at the beginning, Emma Roberts, is, yeah, she's a mess. She's like smoking and she's wearing sweatpants to Christmas dinner and she's like dressing like a slob all day and just like eating junk food. But that's not supposed to be, she's not supposed to be happy during that. She evolves as a character as the movie goes on and she learns to be more self-accepting. So like, yeah, like no, what? I don't think you understood Holiday, Abby! Or you're purposefully misinterpreting it. She's clearly not happy. She's not doing what's best for herself. She's not- I know! That's the point! She's not happy at the beginning and she finds happiness over the purpose of the-, the ah! Making good decisions. And it's just kind of sad to watch her that way. So it's not- it's not great. And then people I'm sure it, would respond saying, conflict. okay, well isn't her family the one that's making her depressed? But the family can be wrong and she can be wrong. Her yes, family they were both wrong, you're correct. Why itself. is this a problem? Her mom is kind of pressuring her and yeah. just kind of- I mean, clearly her mom has issues in one scene where she kind of just makes it about- a relationship about sex and not more than that, so yeah, but you can have a family that has problems and a main character that has problems. The family has their own issues. Yeah, so they both she. have issues. And she and they is not really making the, the best decisions the movie. for her. And she's, she's not, not really like a, a put together kind of person who she's... looks like she could take care of someone else, let alone herself. I'm so confused what Abby's problem is with the character not having their life together at the beginning. <laughs> like, that. <laughs> This is the weirdest criticism I've ever heard. The main guy who also has a lot of issues and yeah. it makes sense that they end up together at the end because neither one has Spoilers, worked Abby. to grow or better themselves. Not really. Uh, but that's number one. And number two is that this is a holiday movie and yeah. it's totally devoid of the faith aspect of anything. It's like almost sacrilegious because- What? Okay. <laughs> So most of the holidays in this movie that are featured are like there's the uh, Christmas is obviously the main one, but a lot of the holidays are not even religious holidays, right? They're like New Year's and um, Mother's Day. <laughs> You're talking about Christmas and Easter and all of these different holidays. Yeah, they're Christian holidays. Abby's not even Christian. I don't know why she cares. Is and people are acting in really disgusting ways and just ignoring the fact that these have a religious significance. So that but not to you, so why do you care? That's a kind of a weird thing to me, is that you're watching this movie and there's clearly no thought to the actual faith that goes into Easter and Christmas. Why is that weird to you? Have you never seen a Christmas rom-com before? They're usually not religious. Why is that weird? Why is, why is she acting so surprised by that? Watch a religious movie if that's what you want. There's plenty of them out there. For example, there's just none of that. It's very odd. The movie is not well done or put together and I would not recommend watching it. It's also incredibly dirty. Incredibly dirty. Just, it's not a holiday movie. Don't- Yeah, it is a holiday movie. You're not the authority on what a holiday movie is, Abby. Don't even call it a holiday movie. It's just not. It's a big no from me. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, this video was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to everyone on Patreon for watching these videos and for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys again on Monday. But in the meantime, don't forget to support small businesses and have a great weekend. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes.
makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. 